Here we are on day seven. that smoke is in the middle of the room, that's the, from the forges. It's like a solid shaft of smoke that appears at the bedrock level and like moves up at, as a visual animation or something. Kind of weird, but... Spikes? I mean, seriously. She, I guess she's getting stuck on the terrain or something? Like, I don't get why she doesn't just move over. It's very, very strange. Me tempted to put a bunch of spikes in that this pit right here because she seems to love it. And you know what? Screw it, I will. If you like this pit so much, why don't you marry the spikes in it? I think that's how the saying goes, right?
the screamers act so uncooperatively when it comes to just running up to the fort and attacking it and dying on the spikes. It's quite unusual. play a second, but I can only get like four plant fibers a second, and I'm not even sure it's like four, it might be more like three or three and a half or something. Obviously, we were, if we were in a desert and we had a bunch of cacti around, that would help, and you could do 15 per swing if they were close enough and you could run between them, but plant fibers are still kind of a pain to collect. And look, I have how many thousands of clay here? the airdrop today at noon though, so that might be worth at least noting where it is and all. Let's see if I get a high enough level for me to really actually want to open a jet. just because of the soil, maybe. Well, we 
we certainly have this. piece of gravel there. It almost it seems like it seems like it's hiding something, you know? Flooded cave things are very interesting, personally. I remember one on a dedicated server that I basically had to be... I had to figure out how to not drown while trying to mine stuff within it, and eventually wound up also making other shafts and trying to reroute some of the water. supply crate which should be somewhere up ahead and once we seem to semi find it I will check how many points I actually have and what level I actually am at this point. And I don't like have really any inventory space right now anyway. So that of course makes it awkward.
theory the crate we're looking for should be somewhere around here, right? Reasonably close. Looks like the supply crate would have fallen somewhere around here. I think. Of course, it might turn out that I'm wildly, wildly wrong. By the way, we need to get back before we, you know, die of thirst. I'm definitely not being as serious about this right now as I could slash should be. Yes, I'm trying to, in a sense, back off slightly because my guess is there's apparently the supply crate. So. Well then. How about that? I was way past it. Wow, this is really far out. In part because, um, I figure compared to the people who are trying to use this, these videos as sort of a guide, I imagine just, just due to inexperience or whatever, trying this stuff for the first time, that they're going to be behind where I am right now. Um, and therefore I'm trying to so semi-relax right now since I got what I wanted done for week one. Like, all they need to be getting done, right, is to have the concrete fort ready by the end of day seven. I had it done ready about the start of day five, a few hours in. Well, past, like eight hours if you want to include from midnight rather than just from the morning all. Figured this way this would help if I'm just out exploring the caves a bit and mining stuff and just messing around a little bit, then hopefully that'll act as a bit of a counterbalance. And more even us up more for the start of week two. problems that this game has a lot of snowballing in it. You know, once you get going, you get going even further. You get, you know, you have better quality tools one day, that means that not only do you harvest faster that entire day, the stuff that you harvest allows you to make even more better tools, relatively speaking, compared to the other guy, or get more done, which gives you more time to get more tool work, right? It's like, pick your poison how you want to describe it. But it's a feedback cycle. Success breeds success. Have. 
None of them have any hydration on it. So, I was wondering, do we have any like pears or anything? That would have been nice. I need to get more glass jars ready, frankly. I have thirst. I suffer wellness penalties due to thirst. Huzzah! I believed in us. melt that recently or something? Why isn't this putting anything at all? That seems quite strange. Well, hopefully it fixes itself, I guess. Not sure there's really any point in obsessing over it quite yet. Mushrooms didn't I don't those actually restore hydration I think I could have eaten one of those. Oh well. That's what it is. Not a headshot. There's a headshot. Should have been dead from Snake. Definitely some temperature extremes in this area, I gotta say. That was so, 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 so off the mark on that supply drop, just distance wise. That anvil, uh, so if the forge that I was feeding the anvils into, if that's not accepting input by the time we get back, I am going to start getting kind of worried. Shouldn't sit at it for that long.
But yeah, Seven Days to Die is very much a feedback loop. And, uh... It's... It's very easy to get astray from what the developers intend, right? You spend the first week getting ready, then the horde beats you down. Then you try to spend the next week recovering from that, and not only just recovering, but doing substantially better because the second horde is worse. And then you have to survive the second horde in a good enough position that you can then not just recover from that, but be ready for the third horde, which is, spike, is a you know fairly sharp spike in difficulty, relatively speaking. So if you fall behind and you just can't quite cut it for the first horde, then you're kind of screwed. Long, you're basically just screwed long term. You're, you're set, set so far back. And because you're already struggling prior to that as well, presumably you have worse tools and all that kind of stuff. Whereas the converse, the reverse, right? Where if you do perfectly fine and excel, then you're even in a better position than the developer to developers even intended for the second week. Which means it's even easier than it should be, which means you have more time to, you know, get other stuff, which means for the third week you're like triply ahead, if you will. It's definitely kind of on a very fine line, and that line is then kind of screwed up, frankly by the randomness of the starting locations. If you start in a position where you have to spend like several days just trying to find water or snow, then, you know, then you're in a much massively inferior position. Much worse position. Compared to somebody who started like in a halfway decent start, I mean. So it's like, how do you balance those two? How do you tune for those two? Because if you say the guy with the, the shitty start is able to do just fine, then that means the guy with the okay start is doing even better, and the guy with the great start is like, lol, this is so easy, or something. Or is or whatever, but and to be fair, um, playing a game that basically has like a rope tied around your neck or a leash that you know if you're not doing so hot, it like yanks you forward. If you're doing very well, it yanks you back to keep you within a certain distance of what the developers intended, that can often be very much not fun, feeling like you're being artificially throttled, or being given a helping hand for free that you didn't want, though good developers will often make that unnoticeable if they can. It'll be look like it could just be RNG. Oh look, I found a few extra potions on this run. Like, well, the actual answer is because you were doing worse and the developers were trying to help you. But, as far as you could tell, you know, it's a random number of potions. It's kind of funny to think about whether something like that could be implemented in Seven Days to Die as well, but like looking at your level compared to the day or something, or zombies kills compared to the day, or some other metric that's actually really not that accurate. But they think, well, it's a decent enough indicator, and think, well, if they are level three, and it is day seven, then maybe we should have extra stuff uh, like more feathers from nests, higher likelihood of, like, schematics or something. Interesting stuff to consider. What if?
idea is also why I was talking earlier about just kind of chilling these last two days and messing around. Trying not to get too far ahead because a little bit of advantage keeps building on itself. It doesn't just stay that little advantage. It lets you do everything else better. Which just goes into that feedback loop we were talking about. actually doing some stuff now, good. because why not? We can add in other little layer spikes. I say I hate trying to place these on not perfectly level ground because they get really, really kind of messed up. Alright, here we go, blood moon time. I meant to make that a larger gap, so there we go.
Stop violating laws of physics by sticking your head through that. That would be appreciated by those members. Damn it, I did not mean to hit that. I like, left it unlooted. Specifically to grab it when I had higher stuff, and I just destroyed it with my axe. Good job, A plus work. Nothing I can do about it now. Just press on.
I saw it in like slow motion as I clicked and like, oh wait a sec, and boom, it's gone. Still, hopefully that showed that week one isn't so bad. The main things you ideally want are at least, say, basically something better than wood, with several layers of the cheap spikes and, and ideally the iron bars, but worst case scenario, even just a, an overhang of other materials to keep the spider zombies out as much as possible. Iron bars are ideal, because you can actually shoot down through them at the spider zombies and not the zombies, but... And apparently we're like level, what, 50-something now? I think it said... 53. <laughs> Miscellaneous crafting still needs to be maxed. It's not right now. That that saddens me. Scavenging, I might try to get to rank six naturally before I buy out a bunch. I only have so. If I bought it out right now, it'd take 55 to get up to 60. Then I would need to spend another 30 on top of that. So I need 85, and I don't have 85 points right now. So I can't even do that at the moment. that being buy up uh, scavenging and then all of quality joe which is a plan long term but at this point it looks like i might just try to get the scavenging six i think it was naturally and then start buying I may do at some point, but just not right now, is uh, you can spam out the iron arrowheads or steel arrowheads eventually when you get calipers. Ideally steel uh, arrowheads, because they literally give twice the XP each. And then you melt them back down and just lose the clay in the time, but if you can have basically a spare forge that you use for basically just that...
only at 71 minus 69 as well. Damn. Got a ways to go on that. Got a ways to go on miscellaneous crafting. A lot of XP there. I'd rather not jump down in the darkness unless I actually see the chicken. Of course, I might just be being completely blind right now and you're all saying, it's right there, you moron. But I don't really seem to be there. This ends week one in a few seconds. I feel like my weapon crafting is really far behind, but I think a lot of that's just due to having to put these wooden uh, frames, wood frames everywhere and fill them, because apparently screamers can see you through the dirt for reasons, I, I don't know. Never heard of that before, but it was a problem in another game, serious problem. Got multiple hordes because she kept screaming. Anyway, so that'll be that for this video, and I will catch you next week, in effect. Have a good one.